Alright, so this is the second tutorial video on how to develop a route for OpenBV. We're going to talk about the structure of a CSV file and the different sections. So let's just jump right into it. Each section starts with the word with. Uh, the word with denotes the name that you have a whole section here. So first we have the with option section. This section defines the basic options as to how you want the route to appear when someone's driving through it in the program. So we have object visibility one here. I'll explain what that means in the next video. Then we have the with root section. This sets up the administrative part of the route and just the basic information. As you can see right here in the with root section, we have the dot comment command. So dot comment is something that I'm sure you're very familiar with. You just don't know it. What the dot comment is, is whenever you load up OpenBV and you click on a route, you should usually see some text on the right hand side of your screen. Like if you're loading up the A-line, it'll say A-line from 207th Street to Howard Beach. So let me load up the comment section for this route, and you'll see what I mean. So right here we have the comment section. It says OpenBV, NJT, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty much a short description of what's happening in the route. Then we have the gauge, which is 1435 millimeter standard gauge. We have that in the width train section too. Width train section pretty much defines the train that you're supposed to use for your route. Then you have the width texture section. This section defines mostly, it's for defining the background, what you want the sky to look like in your route, but it can do other things. We'll go through all the commands here. Then the width structure section is very important. It'll define what you're gonna see throughout your route, the structure of the route. So your rails, what the rails will look like, what object you're gonna use for them, and your objects, what objects you're gonna use for that. After the width structure section, you have the width track section. And this pretty much defines what's happening at each distance throughout the route, and it's the basic coding of the route. So pretty much what's happening is that you're pretty much putting down a distance, and then at each distance you're going to put down a command for what you want to happen at that distance. So we have a distance here. Below that we have the command, which is to put down a certain object. Uh, so you'll get more familiar with this as we go through. So I want to show you something about the structure of the file, which is just a basic book of what happens uh, when you're coding it. So you have a command here. Each command begins with a dot or a period. That denotes that you're going to put a command down, put a certain order down for what you want to happen. So you put dot and then rail type will change what the rail looks like. Dot rail will start a new rail, etc. So each command starts with a dot. We'll go through what each command does later but that's what a command looks like. Each distance, you put down the distance in meters, and then you put down a comma next to it, and then on the next line, it's recommended it's recommended that you go to the next line, you put down the command for what you want to happen at that distance. So, and then each command, the values within each command are separated by a semicolon. So just remember that it's not a comma within each command, it's a semicolon. And so each command, like a free obj command or a rail command will relate back to the structure area based on what you have loaded for that certain index. We'll definitely get into this later. I know it sounds confusing now. So just know the basic structure of how you do things, where semicolons go, where commas go, how to code in a distance, and then how to code a command, which is dot and then the command name, pretty much. And then here in the width structure section, you put in the type of thing that you want to load, like an object, and then you put the index in parentheses, then the location and name of the object. And that is it for now. So please stay tuned for the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. And thank you very much for watching.